Hello and welcome to part two of our 3D printing guide in cooperation with Anvil Industry. Now in part one, we talked about how you can digitally manipulate an STL file and prepare it for printing. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to look at how a machine actually works and then we'll go through the printing process as well as clean up and some notes on how to look after your workspace. Once we're finished, we're gonna have a miniature that we can actually paint and play some games with, very important. Now, thanks also to Alagoo for supplying the 3D printer that's used in this video. I'll talk a little bit more about the Mars 2 Pro as we go through because the differences between that machine, called a mono machine, and a regular resin 3D printer will be quite interesting to you, but we'll touch on those in a little bit. For now, let's get printing. So, for the purposes of our demonstration, we're going to pretend that this little part here is the screen on our printer. It's not, it's just a piece of plastic, but we can imagine. Now that screen there sits at the top of what is normally the base of your printer. And then on the top of that sits the resin tank. Now this tank, it's got a clear plastic interior. You can probably see my camera in it there. But this stuff, this is called the FEP, which is completely transparent. And it makes sure that the UV light, which is passing from the screen through the FEP, into the resin is unobstructed. Now into the resin tank goes, of course, some resin. I'm not gonna pour any in, but that's what we've got there. And then finally on top will rest the build plate. Now I've got an old spare here that's gonna work for our demonstration. That moves down and rests against the FEP to start with. What happens is that the screen shines an image through the FEP at the bottom and it hardens the resin, which is pressed against this build plate. The build plate then slowly rises up and the resin that has been cured by having UV light shined into it now sticks to the build plate. And as it comes out of the resin, the FEP will release it and keep it sticking there. Now it's a slow process, but over time you'll see your miniature appear at the bottom of the build plate as layer after layer is cured and stuck to this and lifted out of the resin. It's pretty simple, and it's only really got one moving part. Now, when we talk about resin, we mean this stuff, and it comes in all manner of colors. I tend to use this water washable gray stuff. There are other resins out there, and most of them will tend to use isopropyl alcohol or something similar as a rinsing agent. Now, resin, whether it's water washable or must be cleaned with IPA, it is a hazardous substance, but so is gasoline. With a little bit of forethought and the right equipment, you can very easily prevent any accidents from occurring. If the worst does happen, it can wash off of your skin very easily with just soap and water, but you wanna get it off as quickly as possible. Now, one other point on resin is that sometimes it can smell, and a lot of people will talk about the smell of resin. Now, it affects everybody differently. I tend not to be too concerned with it because it doesn't smell very strong to me. Different colors, different brands will smell more strongly or not as much as others. And depending on the situation where you have your resin stored, particularly your printer, well, it might not be a big issue for you. I'm lucky enough that I've got a little space out of the way where I can keep my printer, so the smell doesn't bother me. It's worth knowing. It's not normally a big problem, but eh, your mileage may vary. So let's put this down and go and print something. So here you can see my printing setup. Now I've got my printer set up on a nice hard surface, which is easy to clean if I have to. I've been pretty lucky and I've never spilled any resin. So that's a tradition I hope to continue. But in the case of the worst event, I've also got here a drip tray at the front of the machine. If you have a big enough one, I recommend get a big drip tray and just put the whole machine on top of it. As well, I've got a handful of useful tools that I keep nearby. So I've got a selection of scrapers, we'll get into those later, some gloves, some kitchen towel, and some isopropyl alcohol in this jar over here. Now the nice thing about the Mars 2 Pro, which I believe is also on the Mars Pro, is this little rubber seal around the bottom of the cover. This here helps to prevent the smell from coming out underneath. It doesn't help much when you have to take this off to fill the machine with resin, of course, but while it's printing, it's not a big issue. There's also a nice carbon filter in the back there, which helps to mitigate some of the smells as well. Also back there, very important, is the power switch. 
and then we're ready to print. It makes a wee bit of noise, but nothing too major. This is as loud as it gets. Now with the front here too, luckily is the USB port, which I find really useful. It used to be on the back on some of the older machines. This is much easier to reach. Now it's got a nice simple interface. We'll just hit print. And I've got here the file that we prepared in part one. And all I gotta do is hit go on that. Now you'll see here the build plate very slowly lowering <laughs> into the machine. It's then gonna settle in the bottom of the resin tank as pointed out earlier, and then it'll start printing. Now what's interesting to me is on the screen, it'll actually show you what the layer is looking like as it's projecting it onto the bottom of the build plate. It's not very interesting for these first few layers, but that's just neat. I find that a really fascinating part of the process. The estimated time on this print is three hours, oop, there it goes, and five minutes, but we're gonna skip ahead and see what the finished product looks like. Okay, three hours later, we're finally finished. So let's confirm that and turn this bad boy off. Now you'll notice I am wearing gloves because I'm about to take off the build plate and there might be resin on that, so I don't want that on my skin. Let's go ahead, lift off the cover. Now before I take off the build plate, I'm going to open up my jar of isopropyl alcohol. Now this is water washable, this resin I'm using, but you can also use IPA to clean it. So I'm going to show you that because most resins aren't water washable, so safe side here. Okay, so we'll unscrew the build plate and then just tilt that a little to make sure any excess resin drips into the vat. And we'll grab one of our little scrapers and we can just pop that straight into either straight into the jar or as I like to do, let's pop those off onto a sheet first and then into the jar. Now, once these are in IPA, you want to leave them for about five, 10 minutes, and then we'll give the jar a little shake. You can't use isopropyl alcohol in a ultrasonic cleaner because that will probably cause a fire. So be careful with this stuff too. Let's pop the lid on that and we'll put the cover back on the machine. Now, after a few minutes, let's give that a quick swizzle, very technical terms here, and we can pop off the lid and with a pair of old tweezers, I'm just gonna reach in and grab those pieces out. Now, whether you're using isopropyl alcohol or water, once they've been cleaned off, you're gonna to need to let those dry for as long as possible. IPA dries quite quickly because it will evaporate and it leaves no residue behind. Water, you'll just have to wait a little longer. Now, once everything is dried, you'll find it's perfectly safe to touch. But a good thing to look at here is you'll notice the supports are quite flexible. And that's because while the miniature has been cured on the build plate as it was being printed, it still needs to be cured in order to be really hard and pretty much permanently set in place. So you've got a couple of options here. Now you can either purchase a wash and cure station, which is normally a rotating sort of system which has UV lights that shine on the miniature. Some of them are even designed that you can just leave the whole thing on the build plate rather than having to take it off. That's quite clever. Now you can make yourself a cure box, which is basically a cardboard box that you then line with tin foil or aluminum foil or whatever it is you call it where you are, but that reflects UV light. Then you grab yourself a UV lamp of some description and you shine it into that box. And the UV light will then bounce around on the inside, make sure that everything is cured nice and evenly. Or if you happen to have a nice sunny day like I do, you can just leave those miniatures outside to cure. You only want to leave them in bright sunlight for sort of 10 to 15 minutes until those supports stop being wobbly. So I've got myself a little solar powered turntable, not something that you have to have, but I like it just to make sure that everything is evenly toasted, I guess. <laughs> Let's put this outside and we'll come back in 15 minutes and have a look at what that looks like. Now at last, once your curing stage is complete, you'll have a miniature which, well, is just an ordinary resin miniature. It's up to you whether you remove the supports before or after curing. A lot of people, indeed the majority, will normally say it's easier to do them beforehand. I find it just as easy to do afterwards. All you need is a pair of clippers, 
And if you're doing this before you cure the miniature, I recommend doing it with a pair of gloves on. Not because the resin is dangerous to handle, but because while it's still a little bit soft, you don't want to end up putting fingerprints just on the off chance. But however you choose to do it, let's go ahead, get these supports off. Now at this stage, it's really just like assembling any other resin miniature. With a little dab of super glue, you'll be able to assemble those parts easy as. Now I haven't super glued that in, but let's get a look at what that looks like when that's actually finished. And then finally, we have our finished miniature, ready to be painted just the same as any other. Now the actual cleanup and processing side of things really doesn't take that long at all. And when it comes to curing times, it's worth double checking with the manufacturer of your resin to see what they recommend. Otherwise, you can check online to see other people's results, and they'll probably tell you how long they expose their stuff for. Now, when I got started with 3D printing, I had one of the original Elegoo Mars machines. And I have to say, the Mars 2 Pro with the mono screen makes a big difference. Printing time is a fraction of what it was previously, about a third ordinarily, and the results just, you yeah, know, they speak for themselves. I've been printing on it almost non-stop for about a month and haven't had a single failed print, so it gets a big thumbs up from me. So thank you again to Alagu for supplying the machine that was used in this video, and as well to Anvil Industry for putting together this guide. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the comments box below. And if you do have any problems while you're trying to print something, you'll generally find there's a lot of advice out there. The 3D printing community is ordinarily really quick to try and help. So hopefully you found that interesting, and it makes 3D printing a little less daunting. Feel free to pop on back to part one if you haven't had a look at that one yet, and we'll enjoy the rest of your day.